Hi everyone, Alex here. In today's Cavalry Animation tutorial, we're talking all about the distortion filter and some of the weird and fun things you can do with it. Okay, so today is going to be a bit of a fun one. We're going to be diving into some abstract stuff like this. We're also going to be having a look at some distorted text and maybe some ways that you can create a metaballs effect all using the distortion filter. The other great thing about this one is that I believe it doubles down on one of the core fundamentals of what Cavalry is about and it's reusing nodes and layers so that you're not creating new things all the time and just teaching you that sort of mindset so we'll get to this thing in a bit but for now we'll start with the text and just the basic uses of distortion so i've got just a text shape in this scene at the moment let me move that up a little bit i'm going to select the text shape going to go to filters and i'm going to add a distortion filter so when we press play now we can see that the text is distorted but also it's getting cropped around the edges of the text shape and that's because if you select the text shape there's a bounding box on here and it's a effectively cropping where the bounding box of the text shape is. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is load the distortion into the attribute editor. Look for this attribute here called padding and we're just gonna increase that, just give it loads of space. So as it stands right now, it doesn't really look all that useful. Yes, it's distorting the text, but what is it? What is the purpose of what distortion is doing? Right, so I turned amplitude down to about 11. I'm just gonna increase it to about 20. I just didn't want it distorted as much as it was just so we could see what's actually happening. If you open the shade tab on the distortion filter you'll be able to see that the currently active input shader is a noise shader so if you go up to show preview and just check this you can then see a preview of the noise and the best way to explain where this is distorting and where it isn't distorting is that it's choosing the darker areas of the noise to distort the most whereas the light areas remain sort of non-deformed like the R here is pretty much normal whereas the D which is completely black is torn apart. I think a good way to demonstrate that would be if you just create a background shape, we'll add the distortion to the background shape, but then we'll also add an invert filter. The invert filter is just there to differentiate the noise on the background shape to the text shape so that you can see the areas of the text shape that are being distorted because you couldn't normally see this outside of the bounding box of the original text shape. Anyway, I'm hoping that gives you a good understanding of how distortion is choosing to distort the shape. So there's some cool things you can do here. If you open the distortion filter, go to the shader tab. I'm gonna increase the lacunarity down to about, yeah, 0.5. And I'm gonna increase the amplitude to quite harsh, about 25. And then when we press play, we get this sort of like liquid metal. I'm gonna increase it further just to absolutely cement that idea. And that's a pretty cool effect straight away. So if you want to now, you can just get rid of that background because it's not really all that important and you've got a cool distorted text effect that sort of melts through to the inverted color. Something else to note here is that this will work with any shader placed in the input shader slot. So I'm gonna go into a fresh scene and I made this isometric scene the other week. There's a tutorial for that if you want it, but just go onto your distortion filter shaders tab and then connect your image shader to the input shader and hide the image. And now your image shader is distorting your shape, which is insanely cool. All right, moving on, because we've got a lot to show you. I'm going to create an ellipse, and I'm going to add a distortion filter to the ellipse. I'm going to go to the Fill tab. I'm going to right-click Shaders, Add Shader, Multipoint Gradient Shader. And when you click the Multipoint Gradient Shader, you'll see that you've got these two points in the viewport, provided you've got the Select tool active and then on the distortion filter go to the shaders tab and we'll do what we did earlier and we'll drag a connection from the multi-point gradient onto the input shader replace connection we also need to increase padding on the distortion i keep forgetting that one and this is a really quick way to get a cool metaballs effect out of cavalry without really having to do much you can also on the multi-point gradient you can alt click to duplicate these points which is pretty cool so that's a super quick metaballs effect that you can get. You can just keyframe these, change their intensity, do all sorts with them just to change how that looks. 
Okay, so I'm going to clear the viewport once more, and we're, we're going to have a go at making this weird contraption, which is pretty cool. So to start, what you need is an ellipse shape. I'm going to increase it a little bit to about 150. I'm going to go to the fill tab, and I'm going to add a Voronoi shader. And then back on the shape tab, we're going to go to filters, and we're going to add another distortion, because it's all about distortion today. And then we're going to connect the Voronoi onto the input shader and replace connection. I'm just gonna make the background a bit darker just so we can see what we're looking at here. And we press play. And we've got this weird cobweb effect from the Voronoi. This isn't really all that useful as it is. I'm gonna go onto the Voronoi shader and we're gonna change style to Euclidean. We're gonna change type to hierarchical and you can see we're basically there already. Like it already looks really cool, like a Petri dish or something like that. All we really need to do now is just start playing with with the scale, just zoom out a bit, and just playing with these parameters until we've got something that we really like. I tend to increase the loop length just to slow it down. Loop length will make sure that it actually loops at, say, so I've got it 120 frames. At 120 frames, it will actually loop there. So if we move, let's go to the playback. We'll go for 119 because zero counts as a frame. So 119, this should loop around when we get to the end. Yep, see, perfect loop. All right, but in order to get something a bit closer to this, we're gonna have to change a few more things. I'm just gonna go onto the Voronoi shader. We're gonna lower the scale to about 50 on the Voronoi. We're gonna lower the level detail to nothing and just increase levels to the top. And then back on the distortion filter, we're gonna lower the amount of distortion to about 20. And then we can just increase the radius of the ellipse to get this effect that we've got over here. But now you're probably wanting to add the particles and the glow and the color to it so to do that initially the color if you go into the ellipse shape and go to filters there is something called the gradient map which I use all the time and I'm just going to delete one of these colors on the gradient so we're left with black white and then whatever color you want in the middle and then you can just sort of spin and that changes it and gives it a cool whatever effect you want to call that I don't even know <laughs> So in order to add particles to this, we're gonna press the particles button up in the shelf. We're gonna go to the particle emitter and we're gonna change emitter shape to input shape and we're gonna add that ellipse onto there. We're gonna change direction type to outwards, move over to the particle shape in the scene window. We're gonna change gravity to zero and then on the modifiers, we're gonna right click, add modifier, flow field modifier, then go over to the visual tab of the particle shape, select scale over lifespan and we're gonna give it a bell curve just so that they fade in and out as we'd sort of expect and it already looks pretty cool we probably want to increase the length of our composition actually one sec so yeah that's looking about where I'd want it to look if you want to add that extra glow that I sort of had I didn't actually use a glow filter I used the background shape went to the fill tab added a multi-point gradient shader to the shaders and then I put the white point in the center, duplicated these black points all the way around. I then just connected the influence from all of the darker points to each other, just like that. And then you can increase the influence on one. It distributes it like it's glowing. And that's how I made that really quickly. There was a little bit of the edges that I wasn't entirely happy with. So I just went onto the ellipse shape and I did go for a blur, but not that strong a blur. So quite literally, I think I took it down to about one, not even one just to smooth it out a bit and it just looks a little cooler. I also changed the particle visual color, got rid of that green because I didn't want that just to white and then just lowered the opacity on the particles to about 25 because you don't actually need them to be in your face. And it's perfect, it looks really cool. It's like a, an amoeba of some sort. I guess if you wanted to take it further, you could lower the size of the ellipse shape or group the particles and the ellipse. And then I'm gonna select the group, duplicate it and we'll go for a random but we'll lower this to about eight because we probably don't really need them and we'll increase the size on here just until you've got something that you're happy with there if you want to spread them apart because they're overlapping you can just check this relax option on the duplicator and just increase the relax distance they should start spreading a bit yep just so you can see them individually and then probably go back to your ellipse shape and just add a bit of a 
random to the radius. Uh, we've lost it, but if we go to, I don't know, somewhere between a minimum of 50 and a maximum of 250, uh, we can lower that maximum actually, just to give them, yeah, that looks a bit more sensible. I've just realized the particles, they don't actually need to be inside that duplicate. So I'm just gonna remove the particles, sorry about that. Then I'm gonna go to the emitter shape and I'm gonna swap the emitter for the duplicator and that should emit the particles from all of the duplicates now quite nicely. Really cool, simple effect. Well worth trying yourself. As always, I know that you guys are probably going to do something way cooler than this with it, but we're not done yet. There's one more really cool thing I want to show you. Whether it's going to be as cool as that, I don't know. So brand new composition and um, we're going to create a background shape. We're going to add a distortion filter to the filters tab of the background shape. On the fill tab of the background shape, we're going to add a Voronoi shader and then we're going to connect the Voronoi to the distortions input shader just replace that connection there i'm going to open the voronoi shader and we're going to increase the scale to about 300 by 300 and it should fill the screen like this i'm also going to increase the background shape a little bit not too much just to like 1.4 now we need to change the Voronoi shaders style to Euclidean again and then move over to the distortion shader and we're going to switch direction mode from lens to directional and we press play and we've got this really awesome liquid metal effect again let's just hit double the loop length just to slow it down and it's badass really cool little trick and then when we start adding the gradient map to it again we get insanely cool effects, really awesome. So I'm gonna leave it there. I feel like I've covered a lot. I've shown you some really cool stuff that you can do with the distortion filter. Hopefully you make some insanely cool things. Tag me with it on Instagram and let me see it. I wanna see everything you're making and just let me know what else you wanna see. Thanks for watching. I hope the rest of your day is wonderful. Happy animating and I'll see you on the next one. I know now.